Thank you for making the time out. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hi, Ricky. How are you? I was just waiting for more people to come in. So we got yeah. a lot to talk about tonight. Thank you once again for being on the show. I know you were a little bit skeptical about being on the show, but since you've been a huge part of the news at Obi and actually always contributing, you know, to what's been going on on the site, yeah. I figured it would be a good idea to bring you on because you seem like you know a lot about what's going on in the world, even if you don't, if you feel like you don't, but I'm telling you that you yeah. do. So. I try, I try, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll try. Yeah. So tonight we have about we have a few topics we want to talk about. So before we do that, why don't you tell um tell us a little bit about yourself? Because I did do a little bit of that when I was introducing you in the bio earlier today. And my light is going off and on, but tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Um I'm actually at work right now, so I I'm see. on a little break. Yeah. Um I hope but it's not nah, an inconvenience. Um, Oh no, nah, no, nah, it's cool. It's cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, we we All got right. time. I'm I'm good to go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But um like I said, you put out the bio. I'm I'm from from Jersey, Jersey native, South Jersey, Camden, right on the other side of Philadelphia. Um, you know, born and raised, love that hometown and everything. Um, I'm an army veteran. I did twelve years in the army. Um okay. great time. Now that I, now that I look at it now, it was a great time. When I was going through it, it was rough, but it yeah. was an amazing time. Uh, I went to Afghanistan with the 10th Mountain Division, which is up in New York. Okay. Um, from 2003 to 2004. And, um, you know, I came home after that. Since I was so close to Jersey, I came home afterward. And, you know, now I'm married. I have, you know, three girls. And um, you know, awesome. I've been selling phones since then. I went from military to selling phones and stuff. I'm in a, a T-Mobile guy. You okay. Know, so. that's, that's, that's what's up. Yeah. Okay, Ika, I see yeah. Ika's telling us that she's only going to be on for 10 minutes. Thank you so much for even making the time out to, to join us this evening. Um, but awesome. when we're done with this today, the recording, I'm actually going to start putting it up on YouTube because after 24 hours, everything on, on Instagram is lost. So let's yeah. dive into our very first question or our very first topic is gun control. That has been in the news for the past two weeks since the shooting in mm -hmm. Florida happened at the high school. And a lot of yeah. people are now talking about um, repealing the Second Amendment. Is that possible? Is that something that um, lawmakers and legislators are even going to even look at? Now, last week also, a lot of um, corporations that support the NRA were withdrawing their support for the NRA. So let's talk as an Army veteran. What is mm -hmm. your take on the gun shootings in um, the schools just period, not just the one in Florida. We know, hopefully, this will be the last, but we know how all that goes, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, as a as an Army veteran, I I realize, and, and to a certain extent, I understand that this nation just, we just love guns. Like, we love our guns. It's been since Western cowboys, all that stuff. They just love guns in the United States. Um, I don't own a gun. And I actually, I wanted to own a rifle, you know, being in the army, I got trained on an assault rifle. So I said, right. if I'm going to get a weapon, you know, to protect myself or protect my family, I would get an assault rifle because I was trained on how to use one. Right. You know, but in Jersey, they make it extremely difficult. You know, oh. what I mean? so so I didn't go through with it. You know, I went and there's so much paperwork. They is really extensive. So, you know, I just, oh, okay, you know, if it's that much trouble, then maybe I just don't need to get one. Um, right. So but, in Jersey, they make it extremely difficult. Is that the same oh, yeah. with a lot of states or no? No. Okay. No, that's the thing. Some some states, it's like, it's easier to get a, an assault rifle or a handgun than it is to vote mm -hmm. in some places. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, I think that's the, the biggest problem, like. The issue in Florida, what I found the most interesting is that when they talked to, you know, the, the father, it was like he knew that he got an assault rifle. Right. And it was just totally fine. You know, my oldest daughter is 18. And like I said, it's, it's really tough to do that in Jersey. But I can't see if I had a 19 year old son came home and I said, what would you do today? And he said, well, I got an assault rifle. I bought an AR-15. Right. And, I and you'll just, just let like, that. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's okay. Nice yeah. purchase. Like, that's just. 
You know, like that's just that's insane to me. That's yeah. And what is the insane. what is the um the sports store that usually carries rifles? It's not Models. What's the other one? So so Dick Sport and Goods. Dick's, they stopped exactly. selling. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So they stopped selling assault rifles, and they actually increased the age to twenty one to purchase a rifle. Right. So do you know, I've been in, in Dick Sporting Goose quite a few times and I looked at, I saw the rifles, but I didn't make anything of it. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't of interest yeah. to me, but I did not realize yeah. that 18 year olds could actually go in there and purchase guns. And you know what? It's not even just there. Like it's a lot of uh, off highway, like gun shows. Right. Where a lot of people can just go and just purchase, purchase a weapon. You know what I mean? What? I saw a I saw a report. I saw a report, like a consumer report, where they did like an experiment, and this guy didn't live in the state, and just gave some guy at a gun show, like, "Hey, look, I give you three hundred dollars if you buy me this rifle." You know, wow. gave him three hundred dollars. All the guy had to do was show his ID. He lived in that state, and they sold him. The, you know, it took like no five background minutes for this background check. check. No, they did a background check, but it was like five minutes. You know, what I mean, like they do more extensive background checks at if you're trying to work at Target. You right. know, then some of these places buying weapons like it's just it's crazy it's and crazy. jake's is saying i think let me read the comment jake's is saying culture is different in the northeast and california in many states guns are just like any other thing that's true and ricky yeah. is saying uh, kmart did too kmart used to sell yeah. guns i used to work hey, can you imagine can you imagine that like kmart like you go buy like a comforter set and then go a couple hours over and buy a, a rifle i did <laughs> like okay. it's, it's not like... funny but i did not know kmart sold guns yeah have yeah. they discontinued selling guns? Does anybody know? Kmart has, and uh, I think Walmart stopped in like 2015. Right. Okay. Nah. Okay. Yeah. So what is, and I'm asking this question to the people um, in the viewing audience too. What is your take on repealing the Second Amendment? Is it even possible? Because, you know, the way the Constitution is set up is not easy to you know, change a lot of things, you know. So uh, what is your take on that? That, you know what, that, as far as, um, I always found it interesting, like, uh, like we lean so much on the Constitution. Yeah. And, and from when that was done into now, everything is so different. Oh, yeah, of course. Like, of course. like it's just so, it's just so different. And I, I think what's, what's scary about it, I think it's obvious that, like, the NRA values their bottom line more than, how many people are getting hurt and everything. Yeah. It, it might it might make a change now because when those kids spoke out about what happened at that school mm -hmm. and and then Dick said, okay, we're not selling guns. Like, that's a big that, – we're not selling assault rifles and we're – That's a huge age. deal. That's that's big. That's that's big. That's a big vendor. But, like, if the, if the percentage of assault rifles being purchased drops and it affects the NRA's bottom line, then yeah. it's like – what are they going to do? Are they going to step in and say, okay, something's got to be done because, you know, we, we can't be losing money, like any money. Right, right. You know what I mean? So, like, that would be of, interesting. And a lot of the people in government get money from the NRA. We already know that. Um, oh, yeah. Trump denies oh, yeah. that he got anything from the NRA. And Jake's is saying that to make any change to the Constitution, it takes about 20, 25 years. It does take a while. That. That's, e that's yeah. even if people, all of them are in agreement to make that kind of change. Right. Yeah. Right. That's, that's, that's tough. But I, I think it's awesome that at least something is happening. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, yeah. that something's happening. So. Yeah, and people are speaking up. Yeah, people are definitely speaking yeah. up. So let's yeah. talk a little bit about um, Trump wants drug dealers to face the debt penalty. So um, pretty much Trump has been going based off Singapore, their policy and the Philippines also. Hi, Chet. Thanks for joining us. Singapore and, um, and the Philippines, they have this whole thing about drug dealers being executed. And Trump is actually saying he actually consulted with his attorney general, Jeff Sessions, about bringing a lawsuit against some companies that... Um, produce opioids so they're they're saying that the opioids is what really kills people and that mm. his whole statement is that with a gun you can kill a certain amount of people but the people that produce the opioids kill about a thousand two thousand people at a time that they should be the ones that be um executed what is your take on that man that that that's tough i mean 
execution. I mean, I know. I mean, in the, I mean, in the in the eighties, crack crippled the black community like right. like crazy, and you know, and nobody, no, nobody said anything about nobody it. cared. Nobody said anything, you know. So now with this opioid epidemic, yeah. that you know. Now, now they want to take a look at it because it's, exactly. it's more familiar. It's closer to their homes and everything like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a that's a that's a really fine line. I mean, it's, it's executing. I mean, they could. I don't. I don't think it's hard for them to to stop this stuff from being imported in. I don't. I don't think it's as difficult as they they make it out to be. Yeah. Um, and and I think actually it, it ends up being like. If they could make that happen, it would just be a win-win for them because you're not going to stop all of it from getting over here. And and so many people go to jail over it, which, you know, they get money from that as well. Yeah, and so there's a documentary just... on um, Netflix. I think Chet and I were watching it at the same time, and we kind of talked about it a little bit on Facebook about how um, drugs are being imported into the United States and how it goes from, mm -hmm. you know, hand-to-hand. -hand. And honestly... Mm -hmm. The, the people that do the most work get the less money anyway, you know. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. um, they, if, they, if they can track it that way, they can also track a way to get rid of – is it the 13th um, chat? Yeah, he's saying it's the 13th. Yeah, they I did can, see that. That's really good. Yeah, they can find okay. a way to actually get rid of the opioid epidemic. And a lot yeah. of um, people in the healthcare industry are saying that execution is not the way to go about it, that – of course, there's a, there are other ways, which we all know. So yeah. we'll yeah. keep following that news just to see what, you know, how that turns out. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the big one now, which is immigration. Immigration. So mm -hmm. the Supreme Court last Tuesday ruled that immigrants can be held indefinitely without bond. And yeah. what this means is that every six months, periodically, when immigrants can actually, you know, put in a word and say, okay, that they're still in the country, they can actually detain them. And this includes yeah. people already facing deportation and people already seeking asylum. So they can actually detain them. And um, who knows what else is going to happen? You know, like, um, I think it was Angela Rye when she posted it. She said, this is actually slavery, more than modern day slavery, as we now see. Yeah. What is your take on that? Yeah, that was the first thing I thought of. I said, it, it completely sounds like slavery. And I'm thinking when the last time I heard somebody had something that was indefinitely and and it lasted 30 days or something or you know any any time period it's almost like okay we'll, we'll say we can detain you indefinitely and it's just like we'll we'll just remember to forget like you can have people sitting and not see a judge yeah. you know it might be a year two years three years and this you is know, all like costing tax pay this taxpayers money of course oh yeah oh yeah big time yeah, yeah. I, I almost think that with that is like they're trying to they're trying to deter people from like why would you want to even come to the United States right now? That's true. You've you been in Afghanistan. You all you've seen that you know and in, in, oh, yeah. in different countries, people are actually you know seeking political asylum or yeah. you know trying to find a better life for for their families. Right. So people right. have a lot of reasons why they're leaving their country, and somebody actually asked right. the same question too. Yes, the United States, oh, yeah. as we know it right now, is messed up. But at the mm -hmm. same time, it's an opportunity for a lot of people that don't have it, yeah. if that makes sense. Right. I thought it was, I thought it was interesting when I watched, the, I watched the State of Union. And when he had the, the guy from Korea, who he had, like, the, you know, the horrible circumstances happen to him. Yeah. Where, you know, he had him stand in front of everybody and they're applauding, you know, his courage, like, you know, he's got a crutch and, you mm -hmm. know, his father was tortured and everything. And it's like, you know, he uh, pretty much like walked to China. Like he went through like the most extreme hardship. And it's like it's people that go through that kind of stuff. And that's why they want to come to the United States. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like you had put this guy up on a pedestal and, and the State of the Union address and everybody's applauding. But then at the same time, somebody goes through that same type of hardship, try to come over here. You know, you want to you want to stop them, right? Right. You know what I mean? Like it just it just didn't make any it doesn't make any sense. And to people watching, I also want to know what your take is on um, the Supreme Court ruling last Tuesday that immigrants can be held indefinitely um, without bond. A lot of um, 
for me, you know, my, my parents were immigrants, you know, when they came to this country. So I know what it feels like when, you know, people are actually fearful of probably being deported. I know my mom, when she first came to the States, way before I was born, she said she used to clean hotel rooms and sometimes mm. they would pay her under the table. Sometimes they wouldn't pay her, you know, so mm. she was working mm. odd jobs that, you know, weren't, weren't quite fit for somebody that was pregnant at the time, but she had to do mm. it because she needed the money. So there are a lot of immigrants that are trying to be under the radar and do what they need to do, but ICE is still finding them to get them deported, which is quite unfortunate. These are people that try to be law abiding and um, right. do what they need to do. Most, especially giving back to the economy and sending money home. And somebody's right. saying exactly, you can't detain good people for trying, trying to be better, trying to better their right. life and the economy. And if right. what is saying, if they're not criminals, criminals, they shouldn't be detained, which is true. Um, right. So, I mean, we'll keep watching to see. I, I read something briefly saying that the, that the, the detaining people wasn't what, uh, what the Supreme Court meant, that they meant something else. But everything else that I read was leading towards the same story. The first right. place I saw the story was on NPR. And NPR, some, another newspaper said something about NPR got it wrong. But when I read other mm -hmm. sources, they were saying, no, it's the, it's the same thing, that they are going to be detained. And Ricky is saying detained where though? Jail or camp? Sounds like slavery indeed, or sounds like 100%. what they did to Japanese World War II. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 100%. And, and it's like, well, what's really unclear to me about it is um, it, it could be like any type of offense, you know, if, if somebody's an uh, immigrant. Like it could be something petty, like if somebody's drunk and disorderly outside. And they yeah. say, okay, well, you're an immigrant, so we can detain you. And they sit there and not see a judge and not have any idea what's going to happen, you know, for months and months and months on end. Like, that's just. Yeah. yeah and Chet ridiculous. is saying America has lost the moral compass on immigration. We need to be a country that embrace immigrants, um, that embrace immigrants. No, we are, no, not we are pu uh, pushing them away. Now we're pushing them away. Um, yeah. And Jake's is saying the Patriot Act makes it so that anyone can be detained for any reason for as long as needed. Easier than that, there are people on Rikers Island detained for cases that will eventually be dismissed because of that. Right. Yeah, so I mean, the Patriot, the Patriot Act, well, does it, really, does it really say that immigrants, I thought the Patriot Act had something to do with um, privacy, not really detaining immigrants. But, you know, like I said, we're going to keep um, watching the story. So let's dive into the, uh, the next one, which is getting a little bit tiresome to talk about because we already know what's mm -hmm. happening here. The Democrats finally got to release their rebuttal in response to the Nunes memo. And yeah. just in case anybody needs to refresh, the Nunes memo accused the FBI for granting Democrats, Democrats a warrant to spy on Carter Page, who was um, a former Trump campaign aide. But now the Democrats released a 10-page um, rebuttal saying that the reason that Trump and his camp were trying to, what they were trying to do with the two page or four pages that they released was actually to cover up um, the whole Russia investigation and to Right. pull the wool over our eyes like they've been doing for the past right. year and a half. Right. So right. What, is, what is your take on the, the demo? Did, did, you, did you get a chance to look at it? I, so, I saw a little bit of it, not all of it, though. It was 10 pages. I didn't have time to read all 10 pages. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I looked at some of it, and, and what was really stood out to me over it is the fact that he's trying to, he's trying to look at it as, okay, you, you guys did this wrong, the FBI – you know, shouldn't have been investigating them at this point when actually it was done before uh, those allegations even started. And it's like, I mean, those investigations are private. Right. You know what I mean, it's just it's just it's just the same thing. If you if you hire somebody in a private sector, you hire a private a private investigator because you suspect somebody of doing something. And then there's truth in the matter of what they've done. And then you turn and accuse the investigator. You know, like you don't acknowledge what you've done is wrong. You know, what I mean, you, you yeah, you criticize the investigator. Like it's just. It's and the ridiculous. Democrats were at, the Democrats are actually saying that the reason that they 
um, got the warrant from the FBI because Carter Page has been known in the past to be a Russian spy. So yes. they, they yes. figured that that was enough for them to really um, get the warrant to, to spy on him. So, of course, Trump is calling, you know, calling out on them. I think the week it came out, instead of going on Twitter, he actually called up um, one of the Fox News stations to really vent about how he felt about right. what the Democrats released. But, again, right. this is, I hope this doesn't stop um, the investigators, the legal team, to keep doing what they need to do. We already know Russia meddled with the elections, but is getting the right. Republicans and Trump to admit it is where we're at right now. I, I think it could eventually get to that because they're dropping like flies. Like, I mean, it's it's like every week, you know, somebody, you know, that, that he put on, somebody that he put in position is yeah. leaving. Like, they're yeah. resigning, you know. His it's, first it's, it's month, a lot of people happening. resigned, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I think eventually it'll, it'll, it'll come to that. I guess, I, I don't understand how, uh, you know, in my time of watching, you know, presidential elections and campaigns and everything, I can't recall seeing anything this controversial in in my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. It is. It is. It is. It is literally like what he was doing before getting into the White House. Like it is literally a reality show. <laughs> of you course, he's I mean? running. He's running the White yeah. House as if it's a re reality show, yeah. anyway. Yeah. So yeah. speaking of being an army veteran and being in Afghanistan, I know you brought up a question about why would anybody want to come to the States right now? You lived in Afghanistan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know we already know the answer to this question, but what was the state of the people there when you were living there? Um, would, so, you, would you see it as, okay, that was reason enough for anybody to want to come to the States? So when I, when I went to Afghanistan, first of all, I had the complete, the, the, the idea that I had was completely wrong. You know what I mean? Because when I went there, I'm thinking about what I'm seeing on the television before mm -hmm. I get there. I'm like, you know, if I see anybody that doesn't look like me, they're a terrorist. Mm. You know, that was the idea that I had. Oh, really? You know, is that 100%. How they, is that how 100%. they trained you guys in the army to not, do that? Not, not, not how they trained us. Not how they trained us. Okay. But it was just when I'm watching on television, when I'm watching the news reports and everything, and I'm like, okay, you know, if I see somebody dressed this way, like, they, they must be you know, a terrorist. They must be an Al Qaeda terrorist. You know, what I mean, once I get there, right, you know? right, and and it was and it I it was I was so wrong, right. Mm -hmm. Um, I get there, and for the most part, for what I saw, the people were happy. You know, like I had tons of pictures of smiling kids. Like whenever we went through a village, and like everybody was happy to see us. You know, I looked at it as it was no different than over here. Like you have your bad apples, you know what I mean? Like you have people that just that just aren't good people that do bad things. It's the same thing over right. there. And I actually gained so much respect because there's actually still like a remnants of Russia invasion over there. Like I saw like torn down tanks and, and everything. I'm like, what's that from? And it's like, oh, you know, that's from. You know, when Russia came here and there's people that still live there that that lived through that. Yeah. And they were still they were still happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it was it was it was mind blowing. It so really what you, opened up what my you eyes. Experience was totally different from what you saw. And that's the that's the same oh, thing yeah. with, you know, um, African countries being painted mm -hmm. as poor, poverty, one dimensional. Oh yeah, you know, nothing really oh, yeah. happening over there, you know. So yeah. when when you talked about that with Chet, like I remember when I was in high school, uh, my Spanish teacher was from Nigeria, and he asked us he asked <laughs> us to draw he asked us to draw what we thought Africa looked like, mm. you know. And and I said I've been like the eleventh grade, and every last one of us are drawing like giraffes and huts and stuff. Because it's just the perception that we had. Right. And then he shows us pictures from when he was over there. And, you know, it's this beautiful place and, and skyscrapers and everything. And we're like, wow. You know what I mean? Like, okay, we had no idea. But it was the same thing when I went to Afghanistan. It was just, I, it couldn't be any further from the truth. Yeah. And I see the comments coming in. Everybody's saying, you know, is, uh, you know, talking about the Russia. Chad is saying it's amazing that 
um, a foreign government has interfered with our election process and we can't all get on the same page to get to the bottom of it. And everybody's yeah. agreeing about the immigration issue and exactly how media yeah. has brainwashed yeah. um, a lot yeah. of people. And I, I, yeah. a lot of kudos to social media. A lot of people have been using their social media platform to really showcase where they're from, yeah. who they are, and people are beginning to see it. And thanks to a lot of um, movies that are showing that as well. So um, right. we're going to continue seeing a change. And hopefully we'll get a change with everything that we talked about today from, you know, gun control to hopefully the whole thing about drug dealers facing the death penalty is not going to happen. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that that yeah, would be a that's, bit too much. Yeah, that's, yeah, no. Nah. And we'll keep looking at the Nunes memo and the Democrats rebuttal and the spin that Trump has on it to see how all of this plays yeah. out. Yeah. What do you say? It was it was a nothing. Like isn't that how he put it? Like yeah, he dismissed it, it like a, everything else that he yeah. dismisses. Yeah, he dismissed yeah. it. He called it a witch hunt or something like that. Yeah. 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 yeah he tweeted yeah. a witch hunt. So, <laughs> well, thank yeah. you. Thank you, Tehran, so much. I know you are at work and I don't want to hold you up. I want to thank everybody oh, no. for tuning in today. And um, like I tweeted out, not tweeted on my Instagram page. I also put down if anybody is interested in being on the show, the news at Obi is all about advocacy is all about politics is all about talking about what's happening in our immediate community and it's a great mm -hmm. thing that all of us are using our platform to actually um express how we feel in support right. or in disagreement and being right. being informed is the number one thing we don't want to be for or against something we don't understand so which is the reason right. why i am happy that you are on the show today i know you kind of like were taken aback when i invited you but i'm glad that you said you know yeah, what i was Let's like what this. i was like nah i was like really i said <laughs> yes. oh why not why, <laughs> why, not? why, not? why, not? why not why not so why not it was I'm, great i appreciate it greatly appreciate it thank you and thank you everybody yeah. for watching if, if you know anybody in the community Tehran, or anybody watching that is doing great work yeah. in the community and they want to come and talk about what they do and in conjunction, mm -hmm. you know, tying it into what the news with Obi is about, please have them yeah. contact me, okay? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anything else you want to add before we leave? Um, I think that's good. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to go see Black Panther again. <laughs> uh, um... Chet has seen it five <laughs> times, right, Chet? Wow. <laughs> okay, he's got me beat. Yeah, he's got me beat. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right yeah uh, thank thank you thank you yes i will i've seen black panther twice i think i'll go see yeah. it again i've seen it in yeah. regular 3d is it, i saw it in 3d hey and yeah. why not go see it again i keep i'm gonna keep seeing it so i can say everything they're saying at each line I yeah right <laughs> <laughs> all right all right all, all right. right thank you so much have a great weekend everybody all right everybody all right thank you to me <laughs>